Hey there, folks. I'm Bryce Holdaway. He is Ben Kingsley, and we are the co-authors of the Armchair Guide to Property Investing. Ben, we finally got to the end. The, the whole, final chapter. The whole point of this entire book was to get us to the very end where we actually say uh, how to retire on $2,000 a week. We actually show mm. folks how to do that. So uh, munge it together, Bryce. Munge, munge it together. Hey, Ben, I, I just wanted to uh, – there we go. Thank you, Ben, just to uh, highlight that. What page number is that? It is uh, 215, Bryce. Now, folks, we actually – I just want to build a bit of a backstory on this book. When Ben and I decided that uh, we wanted to write a book regarding uh, property investment, we kind of just did that look at each other, which was a knowing look of the world doesn't need another investment property book where – he and I sit up there with uh, pumping our chest going, how good are we? Look at all the toys we've got behind us in the picture. Um, we didn't feel like that was going to serve anyone in any way. So the context of the way that we decided that we would write our book was uh, from the perspective of a professional uh, advisor. Ben's a qualified property investment advisor. I've been doing this for over 20 years. So we thought, what, what would we do if we were doing a consultation, a discussion, Capture everything we'd say in a consultation, put it into the book so that ultimately, Ben, we arrive at chapter 10, which mm. shows people exactly how to do that. Rubber hitting the road, Bryce. Rubber hitting the road. This can is where it all a, happens. Can you give us a quick feedback from you, Ben, around why we decided that, that the world didn't need another book like the other 50 million ones with the plane on the front of it? Well... Look, there's a lot of books out there that just basically talk about this is how I do it and you should follow me. Um, this book is actually about a tailored solution, uh, irrespective of what demographic you are, what um, household composition you are. Um, you can actually do this um, from any walk of life, um, yep. as long as you're prepared to put in the work, put in the planning um, and understanding all of the moving parts. So um, it's very much a framework driven book. But chapter 10 um, sort of supercharges that story when you start to understand um, all of the moving parts that make up, uh, you know, modelling out a plan so you can plan to become what you plan to become. Exactly, Ben. So this is this this book is a culmination of 20 plus years of knowledge from Ben and I doing this. Um, but more importantly, uh, we like to think of this book as the Yoda, Ben, where we are the guide. Uh, not the hero. It's actually allowing people to go through and see themselves within these pages, yep. see how they can actually fit into the book um, for themselves and and actually make that um, make that transition from uh, hoping for some form of lifestyle design to actually getting it. So, hey, what I want to do is um, uh, I just want to shout out to folks. We've got uh, five scenarios that we go through, Ben, mm -hmm. and a couple of things. One, I'm going to quickly go through what those five scenarios are. And then two, I want everyone in the comments section, if they could actually put which one they are, that'd be really good because I can see the comments here and uh, we can we can uh, address that. But, but then, Ben, we actually, we wrote this back in 2016 and we missed a popular demographic for these Ooh, case studies. We so did. So there should have been six case studies, not five. <laughs> so I want to throw it out to, to the comments to see if anyone can work out what it is. But here we are, Ben. You ready? Yep, go for it. Scenario number one is the rent vesta, Ben. Uh, scenario number two is dinks, double yep. income, no kids. Number three is couple with young kids. Number mm -hmm. four is older couple with older kids. And number five is empty nesters, Ben. So folks who are who are watching this, this live, can you just put in the comments box, uh, which one of those are you? Are you a rent vesta strategy? Are you a dinks or a double income, no kids strategy? Are you a couple with young kids? Are you an older couple with older kids? Or are you an empty nester? Or Ben, are you the one that we forgot? Oh, and what is that one we forgot? Because we might even find out that there might be another category that we missed out on. But well, that's, there's definitely that's, one. There's definitely well, that, one. That's the point of this, Ben, because then if we get all this really <laughs> cool feedback, we might have the second round book that has 10 case studies because everyone says, well, you missed this one. <laughs> But there's a few coming in here. So we've got Katrina Smith saying couple with young kids. Yeah. Uh, we've got da uh, Daniel Ray uh, Daniel Ray Lazaru, uh, couple with young kids. Uh, we have also got Asha Gillespie, couple with young kids. Wow. Uh, which is cool. We've got Alexandra Skelton, 
who is a rent vester. Uh, so we've got uh, Michael Alderton here to represent the number twos. Ben Dinks all the way, double income, no kids. Ian's a rent vester. So we've got a bit of a cross section. Have we got um, older with older kids? I uh, just want to have a quick look there. Ivis is nodding. No, she's saying no. No, no. Um, so, all right, Stiggy. It's really good. I get to see Ivis on the screen here, Bryce. I know everyone else doesn't get to see her, but I've got a, you know, I've got her I'll on my screen here. So, stick around. You can exciting. hear her. She doesn't have mute on, so we can hear her voice. <laughs> so, but the thing is, here's the important bit: stick around right to the very end, folks, because Ivis will accidentally put herself on camera. She does it every <laughs> second time. She forgot to do it last time, so I reckon Ben, we're due. <laughs> And then she'll go back and panic and pull the video and edit her out of it and then put it up again later. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. So let's have a, a quick look, Ben. I'll just now, make... whilst you're having a look, I will sort of pad that out, Bryce, by talking Thank about the, the ones who are the couples with the younger children. Here's a little tip for the beginners. What's the amount of income, sorry, amount of cost that you should assume per child? Um, so we use a modelling index that's based on raising children, and you will be around that sort of three fifty to five hundred dollars per month per child. Okay, so that should give you an idea of what it costs. Now, if you want private school fees and um, a few other bells and whistles, pony clubs, uh, drum lessons, dance lessons, and a few other things, but that's roughly the cost it's going to be per child per month. How much? Um, three hundred and fifty. To five hundred dollars, Bryce, per month. They Kingsley, where was the? Where was the, I got two kids, mate. You, oh, I could have heads, they are, your heads up ten years ago. They are priceless, Bryce. <laughs> they are priceless. So it doesn't matter what you have to pay. They are priceless. <laughs> that's what I'm told, anyway. It's not cheap, um, though. No, they're not cheap. So that's the reality, right? So ultimately, that's going to have a big impact on cash flow. Um, we normally factor in around seven to ten thousand dollars in. <laughs> you ready for this? Startup costs. <laughs> <laughs> which is basically preparing for bubs. So yeah. that's getting the nursery ready, getting the, the the capsules and the and the car seats and the prams and all of that. Um, so yeah, you know, it's it's not not a cheap exercise, Bryce, raising no. children. But the memories, Bryce, the memories, priceless. It's a, it's, priceless. A, it's probably a good <laughs> yeah, that's price. So it's probably a good story to remind folks that sometimes we haven't intended to be the family planning clinic. Ben, it might be worth you telling a few stories around. <laughs> Uh, how, as a property investment advisor, you back in the day you turned into the family planning clinic for a bit. There's a anecdote or two you might want to share. Well, mate, I, I've got one straight from today. I got a text message from my lovely wife Jane today. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Um, Jack was on the internet when he, you know, wasn't necessarily meant to be. And what do you think he stumbled across? Oh, this could go. Yep. This... That's pretty much it. Yep. <laughs> you know. So that four little word. It starts with P. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Radio. Our filters aren't working properly. So there you go. So that's the joy you have. Yes. <laughs> yes. When, so we've got to obviously, you know, sit down with Jack later tonight and go through that. It's not stuff that you know. Like, oh, how did you get here? Like, yes. what, what? Where did you go? Yes. yes. Never seen that before. How did you do that? Anyway, so that's a bit of fun. But look, Drops the reality the comments is for all the uh, the seasons parents <laughs> who know how to help on that regard, Ben. The reality is, is that uh, yeah, you know. Um, we have a strong view um, that uh, if you want to succeed financially, mm -hmm. um, you you are best to plan uh, property acquisition before you plan children. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say that, you know, money is everything, um, but it will serve you um, in having a more comfortable and potentially um, prosperous uh, ending um, because you are chasing your tail if you're trying to do it the other way around. So, um, for all those people out there who are thinking, what's the best decision to do? Um, it's probably not having a child when you're renting um, mm -hmm. because it just gets tougher and tougher um, as you go. So we do feel for those those people. But if you know if it's a if it's a, a life story that they want um, and they don't care, um, but just be mindful um, that it's a very, very important decision that you're making. Um, and um, we do know that your state of wallet plays with your state of mind. so, just be mindful of that as well, because um, when the tough, the, the toughness does happen financially, um, it's very difficult to uh, to be up and about. So it's also good to to point that out.
We are, of course, talking about the Armchair Guide to Property Investing, how to retire on $2,000 a week. We have been doing this now for 10 Facebook Lives, not nine, not eight, but 10. Yes. And what we've done is we've actually gone through each and every one of these chapters and summarised the chapters, and we're giving people an opportunity. I think Stiggy might put a little link up on the screen at some stage, which I think would be just about here. Um, ben, do you remember what side it is for you? It's uh, there, Bryce, over yes. here on Very my right. Cool. Thanks for the, the direction oh, before oh. we started. There we go. Ivis, Ivis will be happy with that. So, folks, if you want a copy, um, we're giving away some free copies because we want to get it in the hands of as many people as we possibly can. If you tell us uh, two things, where to ship it, and if you pay for the postage, we'll send you a copy of the book, Ben. So if you want to play along from home, watch all of these Facebook Lives. Um, we we will have this in a standalone podcast as well, Ben. Um, Ooh, which, that's good. Which, which Stiggy, but by the time uh, you're listening to this, you may actually be listening to this as the podcast, Ben. But for those of you who are early days, yep. um, you can keep an eye on that. We'll make that known. But um, so, Ben, I'm just going to throw it back out to the crew who are, are watching us because yep. I want to know which ones we've missed. Ivis, you might be able to help me with this because there's quite a few comments here. Um, but just wanting to see who we missed because there's actually six in the book, Ben. I've left one out on purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to see if it's uh, been missed. But number one, are you a rent vester? Number two, dinks. Number three, couple with young kids. Number four, uh, older couple with older kids. And number five is an empty nester. And then, of course, number six is question mark. So, folks, uh, who did we miss? Um, Ivis, just let me know if there's anyone who's put that into a comment yet. Uh, I'll just have a quick look to see. Um, uh, no. Who do we miss, folks? Who did we miss? Stick around to the end. We want to know who that is. But um, there's a few there's a few comments here, Ben, from folks who are uh, saying they've got the book. So this one from Katrina Smith bought the book. Yep. Love it. Thank you for that. Um, and Ivis might put a couple up on the screen now so people can actually see uh, their comments, which would be pretty cool. And so all ben, those people playing along, Bryce, who are listening to the podcast for the first time, um, the rent vester is still a single person because they're probably screaming out single. It's clear everything. Everyone else was couples, so it's yep. got to be the single. Ah, well, the first case study was a single rent vester, so mm. we captured that as well. Yeah. So, folks, the the one that we haven't talked about, uh, which is in the book, is the divorcee. Mm -hmm. So, someone who is actually needing to recover from a position. So, we got that covered in here. And Ben, the other thing is, if you go to thearmchairguide.com.au. We've actually done a seventh case study, and that's actually the one where uh, we talk about um, uh, single income, single professional female, mm -hmm. uh, no kids. Yeah, and buying, not reinvesting. Yeah, mm. so that's also an important one. So there's some, yeah, look, I mean, there's there, obviously there are different types of demographics out there and how early you're starting, how late you're starting, those types of things are going to play a role. But I think, you know, the teaching that we want to do in terms of uh, this chapter is about all the moving parts mm -hmm. and bringing those moving parts together in terms of, you know, you've learned about the ABCD. So now we're sort of getting more technical on those cash flow elements. So you can start to see, um, you know, when we start talking about those moving parts around cash flow. Um, so Bryce is holding that up there. So lots of lots of data and analysis. And there's also the strategic planning diagram. That's good, and I'm going to do one now, Bryce, which is this one here, which basically has, you know, all of those moving parts so you can start to think about it. And on the very next page, um, woo, that's this one it gets a little bit more technical, but there's Ooh. lots of bullet points there. That's how it af it affects money. I, I've, I've sort of – I've coined it, Bryce. I've co it's called consequential finance. Do you like mm. that? that? That's what oh, – that's the so name yeah. I'm going to give it. It's yeah. consequential finance. So what problem are we trying to solve in yeah. the world? We're trying to solve consequential finance. Now, what does that mean? It means that we're, we're measuring the impact of money decisions. So consequential finance, which is something I've just come up with, yeah. um, really does refer to uh, before you actually spend it, um, it means that what is the impact of that and how is it going to impact your cash flow? Mm. Do you like that? See how I, I did like that. that. You've never heard that before, have you? Oh, I haven't heard that before, mate. I just wanted to take a look at you and, and congratulate you for that. So, <laughs> well done. Hey, um, uh, interestingly, Ben, uh, what we've done, actually, Ivis has just said to me, Daniel said you forgot the ones living with mum and dad. Um, uh, not, uh, not really? Rent Vista? 
You can be a rent vester if you live with mum and dad, as long as you make sure that it's uh, the rent vester is a strategy you want going forward. Because if you change your mind as a rent vester, that's um. Oh, I'm going on Daniel's side there, mate. You can't be a rent vester if you live in a home unless you pay it. You're a board vester. You're a board vester. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I'm sure mum and dad are charging a bit of board, but well, well played, Daniel. I like that. Thank you. Ivis will keep sending them through to me if there's any others. I think she'll put it up on the screen as well. Uh, if you if you leave a comment and we read it out. Ivis puts you up in lights. So, um, yeah, she's clever like that. So, Ben. Yes, mate. Uh, there's interesting um, stages here, right? Because you go from rent vesta, you go from uh, double income, no kids. So it's almost like a, a life cycle approach. Yep. And then also with a divorcee at the end. But it's interesting that um, uh, there's differences within time, isn't there? Because if you're older couple with older kids, yep. usually you've got a couple of things on your side. Um, uh, resource. You've, mm -hmm. you've uh, generally speaking, you've probably got a bit of equity in your home if you're in your own home. Yep. And generally speaking, Ben, you probably got a little bit of a run rate up with your career. So yeah. you're probably starting to hit a bit of peak earning capacity. So the banks think you're you're wonderful in terms of of a credit risk, but the secret sauce in property investing is time. Correct. So so it's not too late, but you've run out. Of, you, you've run it from a, a, a bit of a shorter run up versus. Uh, when we had David before talking about what about living with mum and dad, well, you're on the other end. You've probably mm -hmm. uh, got plenty of time. Um, what, what, what happened there, Ives? Did I say the wrong name? I did. So remind me. Of, I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> this is going well for you, Bryce. Don't no, keep going. It's good. Oh, Enjoying it's all, it. It's all right for you, isn't it, mate? Just kick back. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna coordinate these multiple screens. So then on his um, his side of things, you you've obviously got plenty of time. I'm making yes. a big assumption here but maybe the resources. So it's kind of, um, you know, we've talked about this in a previous chapter, but it's time, target, income and expense. So it's about having these these particular scenarios being at different points in the leverage meter on all of those four things. Correct. And, and I think, you know, obviously the biggest challenge for most millennials is a deposit. So, um, you know, the bank of mum and dad is sometimes helping out in that respect in regards to um, potentially using a bit of equity that they might have in one of their properties, which is a, a great starting point um, to help the, the children get onto the property ladder because it isn't about buying that Nirvana property first up. Um, there is a, a, a program that I'm sure your parents will tell you about in terms of our first home wasn't our dream home yes. um, or, you know, that was their home that they were going to live in, but they had other plans about, you know, buying an investment uh, sorry a holiday home or something on those lines so so it's it's always important to note that that first property isn't usually the one that you're going to be spending all of your time in daniel ben i said david daniel it's daniel i knew we it was apologize. D. daniel i'm sorry mate my uh i was just sending me text messages i'm watching the comments here <laughs> old kingsley mate there all he's doing is turning the pages all i'm he's, doing he's is doing a, the teaching right? I'm, I'm i'm just focusing on the lesson here um, assumptions. Right? <laughs> assumptions is next. Hey, for a man. <laughs> it's, it's like we're finished, isn't it? Like it's the last chapter. We'll let our hair down a little bit. <laughs> well, you, right, let, so, you, let, you let the hair down at the bottom of your chin a little bit. Thank you. It's the first one. Two, um, 221 is an important page for everyone to read when you are thinking about how you do these cash flow assumptions. Um, yeah. Thinking about now, since we've written the book, mm. Bryce. Um, mm. We uh, always use seven and a half percent long-term interest rates. Yeah. Now, um, the the model that we use, just to give everyone context, is that we look we look from 1990, um, and effectively when inflation and with the recession that we had to have, and we looked at the long-term interest rates over that time up until today, and that was back in 2009 that we did that analysis. So that's how long we've been doing this work for. Um, since obviously that time we've had low record low interest rates and going lower and lower and lower and now we're at these you know what what was once referred to as emergency interest rates which are now going to probably be the norm uh, for mm. any time that i'm alive mm. um and so we've now dropped that down so we we average that out each year and that's been creeping down so we would suggest um as an absolute minimum number um, that you wouldn't push below 6% long-term interest rates. So when you're doing your modelling and making sure that you can afford something, um, because interest rates will go up at some point into the future post-pandemic, and so you want to make sure that you can afford this property for the medium 
to longer term, not just the short term, because we don't want to be speculating in property. That is not who we are. That no. is not what we re recommend. No. Uh, we recommend multiple different you know, strategies for different people, cash mm -hmm. flow strategies, balance strategies, growth strategies for, for different households and what their surpluses are. So that's an important message, but that is, that's probably the main one that's, um, that's changed. But everything else in here is pretty much Inflation is probably still sitting at uh, indexation at 3%. You could probably tweak that to 2.5 in the current environment. But everything else, 6% uh, capital growth on um, uh, on your superannuation returns, 9.5% um, contribution to super. Mm. That is going to hopefully go up, or, although who knows, Bryce? I mean, can I give you a, a little scoop? What's going to happen in the October budget? You can give us a scoop, Ben, and while you're doing that, if the folks who are watching us, because there's quite a few folks here, Ben, um, just pop in the comment section where you are right now watching this. I'd love to know that. I'm going to read a few out, but go for it. Scoop for October. So scoop for October, tax cuts, personal tax cuts are coming, Bryce. Ooh. The question is, they're going to be moved a year forward or are they going to be moved 18 months forward? So will they be from the 1st of January yeah. 2021 or will they be from the 1st of July, 2021. So that's number one. Mm. Um, the other uh, point uh, around what's also going to be coming is as a as a tweak, they may not move that compulsory contribution. Uh, they may push that timeline out. So it was moving from 9.5 to up towards 10 and then 10.25. That, that may just be pushed out by a year or so. So just um, with that, that one, I'm not really sure of, but I'm pretty confident on the tax cuts. Oh, um, your and, mail's uh, good, you reckon? Mail's you very good. You are yep. the future Prime Minister. So, hey, Ben, Renee's in Davin, uh, Devonport, yes. in Tasmania. Uh, Love Speeden is working from home in Sydney. Uh, we've got uh, Katrina in Thornlands in Brizzy, Katrina Smith. Yep. We've got Anna Berrigan in Mackay in Queensland. Hmm. Gee, wish, mate. Nice. You'd be happy with being up in Mackay in Queensland right now, but seeing as you're a battery yep. hand over in, yeah, in yeah, Melbourne. I'd, sn I'd sneak up to uh, Early Beach there and go out in the Whitsundays for a little little paddle. Yeah. Lola in Queensland. There's a bit of Queensland. Cornubia in Brisbane. Um, and then we've got Nathan uh, from Melbourne with a face mask on his little emoticon, uh, uh, which is good. Ian from Sydney, Alexandra from Western Sydney, Port Headland over in Perth. Oh, well, I can't really call Port Headland. No, no, it's a bit, bit high up in the Perth, Perth, yes. Perth side. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're a Western Australian, mate. You should know your, your you know, geography. Mate, I picked myself up within three seconds. Fair go. Like, Fair three, call. Fair yeah, call. Three seconds. So, oh, we've got Kalgoorlie here. We've got lockdown in Melbourne. Yep. So, we got we got a bit Dean in Melbourne. So, Ben, this is the... Oh, there's the pyramid. This is the culmination because um, oh, I've just lost my page. Chapter one covered it through here. Chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. So we were building the knowledge base all the way to the very top, Ben. Can so you read we... it out for me, Bryce. Can you read it out for the? For the you are Mr. Audio. Okay. So. Chapter one. Chapter one was the personal values and goals, Ben, which and yep. mining mindset. Chapter two was the four foundational levers, Ben. Maybe you could put the um, the pyramid up on the screen as I oh, read yeah, this I'll out. Read That's a great there we go. There we go. See how we work together. Chapter three is the five essential steps, money, smarts, and the industry players. That forms part one, Ben. Then part two is in chapter four, investment foundations. Ivis is asking you to move it the other way, Ben. Uh, the property investment formula. No, the other way. <laughs> chapter five is the property investment formula and building a team. Uh, chapter six is the property market mechanism. Chapter seven is the buyer's decision quadrant. Chapter eight is you as an investor. Chapter nine is the investment strategies, Ben. Those 18 investment strategies. <gasps> and then chapter 10 was the real life case studies. Can you believe we've done it? We've done Kingsley. It. There we we've go. done it. We're done. And the conclusion, Bryce, I think we should, should we read the uh, the final paragraph of the conclusion? Um, okay. Go on, on the close. On the close. No, I think it's on the close. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, the thing is that um, you want me to read it or are you going to read it? Well, how can the people get the book? Just for a final reminder of how you can get the book. Well, if you point to with your right hand and I'll point with my left hand, we just go there. That's how they get it, Ben. Over right that way. There. There. Yeah. there you go. Now, I was just, uh, stressing out, but here's the point, Ben. Uh, if you want this book and you're a reader, you go to thearmchairguide.com.au. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll send it out to you. But if you're also an audio book listener, Ben... Um, there's an opportunity once you get the free paperback, yep. you can upgrade to get 
the audio book because you might want to consume whilst you're listening in the car, going for a jog, going for a walk, all that sort of stuff. And so if you get the paperback book, there will be an opportunity for you to upgrade to actually get the audio book. But not only the audio book, Ben, you'll get the Kindle version. Mm. You'll get the PDF version. You'll get all the supplementary notes, so just the tables so that you can actually just have the tables next to you as you're listening to the audio book, Ben. You might be on a plane or whatever. Actually, me. Not a lot of planes. So, so basically, um, thearmchairguide.com.au, if you're a reader, if you're a listener, if you're a skimmer, if you're a Kindle, it's all covered there, Ben. So we want you to go and check that out, The Armchair yeah. Guide. So I don't know if it's still up on the screen. Yep, actually it is. So there we go. Any closing comments before we go to the conclusion, Ben? No, no, I've enjoyed these last 10 Facebook Lives, Bryce, and and for those people uh, on on them, I've apologised to you now in advance for obviously interrupting your day, um, and those who are listening on the podcast, apologies for our little, you know, run around there in terms of having a bit of fun, <laughs> but so hopefully you got some takeaways as well. <laughs> Very good. So it's been enjoyable, Ben. I will go. I will finish with this conclusion. So I just know where she can hit the button. But uh, it just reminds me. I, for those the audio book, I had to read the book twice. <laughs> the first time the audio wasn't good. So the second <laughs> time. So it kind of feels like I'm reading the conclusion probably for the third time, Ben. So, but here we go. So, <laughs> congratulations on getting to this point. You've climbed to the top of the pyramid with a lot more knowledge about this whole property investing thing. Now your armchair ride can begin, Ben. However, just as with dieting, where nothing replaces eating well and regular exercise, so too is it with investing that nothing beats having a proven process and, Ben, actioning it. Mm. That's the way you sign off every week. We hope that reading this book gives you a great start on your investment journey. If you have already started, we hope we have given you a greater insight into all the important parts and that when you put together, they make for a very, very powerful result. Our wish is that you keep the book handy, Ben, Keep the book handy mm -hmm. and use it as a constant resource that you refer to often. So I'm going to go straight to the final words, Ben. Yep. Our final words, knowledge is empowering, but only if you act on it, Ben. You should start saying that each week. Building passive income comes when the grunt work has been done. Only then can you sit back and relax from your favorite armchair. There we go, the title, uh, from your favorite armchair. Only one thing left to do, Ben. That's begin. Over to you. That's actually how we sign off. Over to you. If I can get it on the screen. There, we there go. it is. Yeah, we got it. Sort of still. Oh, there it is. It's even in focus. <laughs> there you go, folks. Over to you. So I'm going to encourage you to go to thearmchairguide.com.au. Go and get whichever way you like to consume the book, Ben. Um, if it's paperback, we'll do it for free. If it's audio book, we upgrade it for a small fee once you get there. But go and check it out. Uh, we'd love for you to do that, Ben. And the other thing I want to say is uh, we have a podcast. It's called The Property Couch. It's our joy and our privilege and our passion to do it each and every week where you and I get together, give the insider's guide to property finance and money management. This Thursday will be no different, Ben. At 3 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time, we will release another episode. It is a corker this week. You've got to check it out. So I'd encourage you to do that, mate. But So before I sign off, any last words from you? Well, just uh, I just want to publicly acknowledge you, Bryce, for reading the audio book. Thank you very much for doing all that work twice. I think it's a, a grand effort and uh, people will get benefit from that because it wasn't me. So I think that's that's an important <laughs> outline there. So, yes, mate, well done. Congratulations. Right. And, uh, yes. Well, hopefully... they, get the, they get the benefit of your wisdom between the pages. But thank you for that, mate. I'm certainly hopeful that it, uh, that it does provide value uh, to our community in some way, shape or form. Go and check it out, folks. Go and get – a free copy, go and upgrade to the audio book if that's your jam. But uh, each and every week, Ben, the podcast. So I reckon you should go and check it out at thepropertycouch.com.au.